thanks for coming back. This is Pocket83 here, and this is my spooky garage lab for 2014. I think that there are quite a few interesting things mixed in here, and some of them are probably worth your time to take a look at, so here's how I'll break it down this time. After this walkthrough in the dark, I'll show you another walkthrough in the light, and if you still want to see it in more detail, I'll make a second explanatory video where you'll be able to better understand how some of these miscellaneous parts and props work. So enjoy! A lot of these effects seem way better in person, so it's kind of hard to get a good feel for the level of detail that's in some of this stuff. I also apologize for the quality of footage, which really doesn't do it justice. But, of course, some of the mood is always lost in translation to video anyhow, especially with the case of the lighting. Lighting is one of those areas of skill that you have no choice but to improve when you make YouTube videos, and this case is where I actually get to show some of that off. Yes, that's a baby. I know, it's a little twisted, but you'll live. As for those aliens, there are three of them here, and I'll go over how I made them in the follow-up video. But for now, I'll just let you wonder what they are. There is supposed to be a loose narrative here. You know the old story. Scientist tries to cross brain with alien, alien escapes, baby is injected with alien seed, etc. But if you take a look at the center tank that's on the main experiment, you know those three tanks, it it's broken, well fake broken glass, as though something had climbed out. <laughs> That is actually a PlayStation 2 console on top there, as though it were the main computer for the experiment. I actually soldered together some LEDs inside of it, so that the PS2 appears to turn on with its own switch, but it's really just hollow inside and just runs on batteries. Of course there's the obligatory cliché plasma ball, which did actually turn out to be a lot of fun to play with. Did you know if you hold a CFL up to it, like a compact fluorescent light, if you hold one of those up to it, the gases inside the light bulb actually light up, and the kids just love that trick. In fact, I asked one kid what his favorite part of the whole thing was, and he just pointed to the plasma ball and smiled. Here we are in the light, which really knocks some of the magic out of it. Take a look at that orange fluid in the corner there in the Erlenmeyer flask. That was a strange substance. All of these glowing solutions are just made by soaking highlighter markers in water, and then they fluoresce under black light, but this orange one was weird. If you jump back to around 27 seconds in this video, you'll see that it looks like a green opaque fluid, but in the daylight it's orange and translucent. The bubbling and boiling effects, and also the fog, are caused by dry ice. Dry ice is just CO2 or carbon dioxide that's in its solid form. It's called dry because it goes directly from a solid to a gas and that, that's a process that's called sublimation. Oh, CO2 is also what makes your soda pop fizz.
that actually is a functional kiln that's sitting there. It's just usually covered in plastic. So I incorporated it into the design. I used to do quite a bit of pottery and sculpture, but there's only so much time in the day, so I've been away from it for quite a while. Some of this footage is redundant, so please excuse that, but I want to be able to reference this in future years. I always seem to encounter this phenomenon where my past self is way more clever than my present self, and there's been so many times where I just can't figure out just how he made something. Well, I hope that you found this interesting, visually and in other ways, and I hope my narration was more entertaining than it was annoying. Now, if you want to see some of how this stuff was made, look for the next video. Bye!